What is up, beautiful people? Today was a crazy day. We woke up this morning to see Elon Musk tweet about Tesla potentially accepting Dogecoin if they should. But in addition to this, there was an actual Dogecoin mascot, the Shiba Inu dog, a miniature statue sitting right in front of the Wall Street bull statue in New York. An actual little dog, you can see it's a mascot sitting right there just mocking it, saying, look, the stock market's been doing terrible, Dogecoin has been doing well. And in addition to this, we saw Ethereum. Ethereum was all over the place. We saw it reach record of highs of $4,200 per coin, it dropped down significantly to $3,600, drop of 15% at one point, and now we're starting to see it recover. So today's video, I wanted to break down everything going on in the crypto world within the last 24 hours. We're first going to start off by talking about Dogecoin. Elon Musk tweet, a couple of new developments with SpaceX, and they're accepting Dogecoin. After that, we're going to talk about Ethereum because Ethereum did see a bit of a flash crash, but now it's starting to recover. Analysts are saying, you know, where they see it going forward. I'm going to give you guys a price target because I don't think we're going to ever see it drop down below that $3,000, you know, $500 range again. And at the end of the video, I want to talk about SafeMoon because SafeMoon had a lot of big developments come out over the last 12 to 24 hours with um, being featured on major billboards in Times Square to now having over 1.9 million holders and a lot of other announcements. So we're going to break all of that down. And before we get into it, if you enjoy this sort of content, it really helps me out a lot. If you guys could just like the video and subscribe to my channel turn on the bell notifications um, it lets me keep doing videos like this but anyways Elon Musk came out earlier this morning and he tweeted about should Tesla accept Dogecoin. He said, do you want Tesla to accept Doge? And according to the poll, there's been 3.4, almost 3.5 million votes at this point. And it is a 78% of people say yes, they should accept Doge. And obviously him tweeting this, he probably expected this answer. If he didn't like everyone would have accept, uh, expected this answer to come from Elon Musk. As soon as he tweeted this, this was at 4.13 a.m., we saw Dogecoin's price bounce back significantly from where it was at. Um, immediately, you could see it go from 46 cents per coin all the way up to 52 cents per coin, like within 20 minutes of him actually putting out this poll. Is this gonna really affect the price long term? We'll get into that in a bit. But so right now, we have had major developments with Dogecoin and Tesla and Dogecoin and SpaceX. The other day, SpaceX, they said that they officially accepted Dogecoin as a payment to launch the Doge One mission to the moon next year. It's gonna take place in Q1 of 2022. And I wanted to go over this because a lot of people have you know, been talking about this. They're saying, oh, this should have driven the price of Dogecoin up significantly higher. But the importance of this is that with SpaceX officially accepting Dogecoin and with this company that they're doing business with, Geometric Energy Corporation, um, now that those two companies are only going to do business in terms of Dogecoin moving forward, well, the importance of this is not about this announcement. The importance of this is that long term, now Dogecoin is used as a form of payment for probably going to be tens of millions, hundreds of millions of dollars between SpaceX and Geometric Corporation. Um, long term. In addition to this, according to um, top executives at Geometric Energy Corporation, they explained how them doing this is setting a precedent for interstellar, interplanetary commerce in the future. They're saying that in the future, they want Dogecoin to be the method of payment moving forward for interplanetary commerce. So what this does is it essentially establishes Dogecoin as not just being a meme, not just being a joke. It's a legitimate thing now because major corporations are spending tens of millions of dollars to send missions to the moon. You know, those cost a lot of money paying solely in terms of Dogecoin. So in my opinion, yes, this was a huge announcement but everyone's talking about it right now. They're saying, oh, Dogecoin's price has dropped. But this is all about long-term. Long-term, this just solidifies Dogecoin um, as being like an actual potential currency down the road, potentially for interplanetary commerce. That's what their goal is. But either way, it's saying, look, 
You know, people think Dogecoin's a joke. People don't think it's going to be around. But now that SpaceX and Geometric Energy Corporation are officially doing business with Dogecoin, it does confirm it long term. Speaking of Elon Musk, though, and Tesla, Tesla came out, you know, they, and he spoke about them potentially accepting Dogecoin. Is this going to impact Dogecoin's price long term? A lot of people have been asking me, I've been seeing thousands of comments asking, how is this going to impact the price long term? So I think at the beginning, we're probably going to see a lot of people who own Dogecoin are going to rush and buy Teslas with their Dogecoin because Elon Musk, he's the Doge father. He is the one who's been pushing for Dogecoin for a while now. And a lot of people who own Dogecoin are they love Dogecoin just as much as they love Elon Musk. So I think this would be a great move for Tesla to actually accept Dogecoin um, because it's going to bring a lot more attention to them. It's going to get a lot more people to buy cars, in my opinion. So I think this is a good move for Tesla. And for Dogecoin, I think it also will definitely help the price continue to rise, continue to just establish it as a long-term player because... If people start to accept Dogecoin and people want to pay with it, well, then it makes it a legitimate thing. The only thing that makes, you know, the main thing that's going to make Dogecoin a legitimate currency, let's say, years from now, is going to be how many people want to pay money, how many people want to transact with it, how many businesses are willing to accept it. And if there's enough businesses who want to accept it, enough people who want to spend money with it, well, then it's essentially real. So right now, we did see it recover a bit, and those were two big announcements, but these aren't, um, in my opinion, big announcements for right now these have bigger impacts long term because they help to solidify dogecoin as being um, a real crypto years and years from now not just something that was a fad that came up you know made a lot of people money but it's gonna be something that's gonna be around for years and years to come so i'll keep you guys updated on if uh, Tesla officially does accept dogecoin right now he just released that poll so it's not official but in my opinion, it's most likely going to happen very soon because why not? Why not? Like Elon Musk, he's the Doge father. If we all know Elon Musk, he's going to allow Tesla to accept Dogecoin. Now let's get on to Ethereum. So Ethereum's price has been on a bit of a roller coaster. We saw it reach record highs of $4,200. Everyone was talking about, you know, is it going to crash? Is it going to come down? And then we did see a big pullback. It dropped down to $3,600 per coin. We see in the last 24 hours, um, 24 hour low was $3,778. So it dropped right around $3,700. Now it's already back up above, well above the $4,000 range. In my opinion, moving forward, I see this as being the last great chance of buying Ethereum under the $10,000 per coin range for a couple of different reasons. So first, Ethereum 2.0, um, it's a major upgrade that's taking place. We have Ethereum 2.0 and EIP 1559. Both of these are major upgrades to Ethereum. They're going to help um, change a lot of things that have been pretty prominent issues. Um, things that have deterred people from using Ethereum, being on the platform, those are being solved with these two upgrades. So the first one is that with uh, Ethereum 2.0, it's going to change the system from proof of work to proof of stake. And this is a big change because what this is going to do is this going to help, first of all, reduce energy consumption by 99%. That's a really, really big deal. In addition to this, we're also going to see the transaction speeds increase dramatically. Right now, ETH 1.0 can only manage about 25 transactions per second. And that's really not enough to be a global a global presence and be able to use globally. So with the new upgrade, it's going to have the ability to handle up to 100,000 transactions per second, according to the founder of Ethereum, um, Vitalik Buterin. So that is a really big deal. While this may not be good, you know, may not be good enough long term, um, they still might need to make a couple more improvements, a couple more upgrades long term. It's a big, big jump from 25 transactions per second to 100,000 transactions per second. That's a major issue that the platform has had. And it's been what has been causing a lot of people to go over to platforms like Solana. Cardano, EOS, and all the other competitors in the decentralized finance space. So with this upgrade, it's going to help with that. The other thing, like I've mentioned a lot of times in the past, is with um, Ethereum, uh, once 
we're starting to see institutional investors get into Ethereum more and more. And this is because, like I said, with the upgrade, it's going to be 99% reduction in terms of energy usage. That's a big deal. Not only is that going to encourage institutions to invest in it, but it also is just better for the environment. And the one issue that people have had, regulators have had with Ethereum, Bitcoin, and crypto is that it consumes so much energy. Bitcoin is terrible for the environment in terms of how much energy it consumes. And with this upgrade with Ethereum, it's going to consume drastically less energy, 99% less energy. And that's going to be better for the environment. Um, institutions, regulars are going to like that more. Institutions, they're always trying to invest in green technology, clean energy sort of companies. It's it helps them. It helps what their their goals are. And so by Ethereum 2.0, having that massive reduction in terms of energy consumption, it's going to encourage a lot more institutions to put their money in Ethereum versus putting it into Bitcoin. They have a lot of you know regulations in place of what kind of investments they can make and always investing in green technology companies is much more attractive for these large institutions. So that's a big deal. And finally, according to Oppenheimer, Oppenheimer, they said that with Ethereum, you're seeing that with big upside comes big uh, risks. So, you know, you can't, you can't have these huge rewards without taking the risk. And that's what we're seeing right now. People were worried the other day when Ethereum had that bit of a flash crash, went from $4,200 down to $3,700, $3,600 per coin. And this is to be expected. In the big scheme of things, that was not a big drop at all, at all. If you look at the history of Ethereum, we consistently see corrections that are much bigger than that. We see it go from in April, April 22nd, and went from $2,700 a coin, $2,600. $600 a coin down to $2,000 a coin. And that was, you know, a 25% drop, basic, uh, right? Like a 20, 25% drop. So seeing drops like what we saw the other day is nothing to be worried about long term because we're just at the beginning of this bull run. In terms of Bitcoin versus Ethereum, we're still in phase like two or three out of four phases in the bull run. I think we're going to continue to see Ethereum do well as we see more institutions get into it, as we see these couple of upgrades, the EIP 1559, ETH 2.0 take place, and everything else going on there. So I'm consistently adding Ethereum over time. I actually did add some the other day when it dropped below four, when it dropped below that $3,800 range. I let everyone know in our Patreon about it. So if you want to see investments I make, make sure to check out that group as well. And finally, let's talk about SafeMoon. So SafeMoon is up 117% in the last week, up in the last month. 1155% in the last year, it's up like 2 million percent. Crazy. Right now, it's one of the fastest fastest growing cryptocurrencies out there. They had a massive bullet, uh, massive appearance on a bulletin board in Times Square. And right now, a couple things to know about SafeMoon. So first of all, is the token just launched in the first quarter of 2021. And the important things to keep in mind about SafeMoon is that they say their mission, their goal is as a decentralized finance startup, they want to address common issues that are found in other cryptos, which are basically price volatility and the tendency for some crypto investors to not hold for the long term. They said those are the two big issues. People are, you know, the price volatility and people not holding long term. So in order to address this, this is a big thing that they do. They penalize sellers with a 10% transaction fee um, when they do sell it. So half of this is redistributed to the rest of token holders. And that is a big, big deal. So if you sell it, there will be a 10% sort of fee. But important things that just happened with SafeMoon, which I want, which is why I want to talk about it, is SafeMoon officially overtook Bitcoin on CoinMarketCap's most watch list. Bitcoin, you would think, would have more people watching it than any other crypto out there. And they did. They had about 1.2 million. Um, they were on about 1.2 million watch lists. But now SafeMoon has officially become the number one crypto in terms of how many watch lists it's on. It's on 1.3 million watch lists. So that's a big deal. You know, when we're talking about crypto and a lot of these new crypto startups, it's about which ones get the most attention, how many eyeballs are looking at it. And obviously, 1.3 million people have it on their watch list. It's getting a lot of attention. In addition to this, just the other day, they, they had 
a big appearance on Times Square, um, one of the most prominent primetime locations. They were on on this one of the on the boards, and it says Safe Moon, the world's fastest growing cryptocurrency. And this is pretty exciting, you know, to see. Cryptos, not just Bitcoin, Ethereum, Dogecoin even, but seeing some of the smaller ones that are up and coming get major appearances in pretty prominent locations. So that was very exciting to see. And finally, last thing with SafeMoon I want to go over is that they just surpassed a major milestone within the last hour, which is that they just surpassed 1.9 million holders for SafeMoon. That's a big deal. That means we have people who really believe in this project long term. It's similar in terms of it just was launched. Um, it is sort of like a meme crypto. It is not, we don't know too much about it just because it is so new. The most important things are that 10% that 10% uh, penalty fee, and a couple of other things. So I did a video a while back addressing all the details on SafeMoon, but I wanted to go over those three specific announcements because I thought it was pretty cool. The 1.9 million holders, the appearance on a board in Times Square, and also surpassing Bitcoin in terms of number of watch lists they're on. So that's what's really going on with SafeMoon, Bitcoin, Ethereum, and Dogecoin. I hope you guys enjoyed today's episode, a bit of a longer one, and if you enjoy this sort of format, the longer videos, let me know by commenting that down below. Um, I like to do a lot of shorter videos because I feel like I can get more content out to you guys, but if you like the longer ones, I'm happy to do these as well. Hope you guys are having a great day, and I'll see you in the next episode.